Hi, I'm Maria Nadestad. When I first started the OM Genomics channel, the idea or the goal for me was to encourage more biologists to get into bioinformatics. And so I had some videos about what is bioinformatics and what languages should I learn first and things like that. And it was great, but there were also people who started asking me questions like, if I'm a computer science major, how do I get into bioinformatics? And if I'm already a software engineer, how do I get into bioinformatics? It sounds like a cool field. Should I go into bioinformatics? Um, and so I wanted to take a chance in this video to answer some of those questions. So this is a video specifically for people who have a computer science or software background. And I might address ML uh, machine learning backgrounds a little bit as well um, for people with more of a research background, but with basically no existing biology degrees or you are not studying biology or anything like that. Okay, so this is for you guys. A lot of you have asked me these questions, so I want to first give you just a quick rundown of my own background so that you know where I'm coming from and you know how much of a grain of salt to take my words with. So for me, I did my undergraduate, my college, university, bachelor's in biology. And at the end, I, I had about a year left when I realized that I wanted to do more computer science as well, and that I should set my sights on doing a bioinformatics PhD. So I took two computer science classes, basically introductory and data structures and algorithms, that's it. And then I took some math classes, uh, really tried to get all I could fit into the last year. And I then ended up with a uh, doing a PhD in bioinformatics after that. So I have since my PhD, when I first started this channel was right after my PhD. And then after doing this channel for a little while, I ended up getting a job in biotech industry. And um, I have now been in two different roles working on bioinformatics software, essentially. So in the first role, it was, I ended up finding myself on kind of a front end team at one point where I was working very closely with software engineers. And so I understand, or I got to know what things like linters are and how to use a Kanban board and all of these wonderful things in the software world, um, as well as like doing code reviews for the first time, which somehow I had never done as an academic. Um, I think that's very common but hopefully it's more common now that people have started to do these kinds of uh, better software practices. And I might do a video on better software practices in bioinformatics as well, uh, because I've definitely come a long way in that sense by being on real software teams. So if you're coming from a CS software background, you might also have some of these great skills that you can use as you're moving into a bioinformatics role, um, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. So. Now I am on more of a research team. I work with people who have machine learning backgrounds and software backgrounds, as well as uh, m people like myself who come from more of a uh, biology genomics type background. And there I can see a little bit more of what a research role looks like for people who are mixing genomics and software, um, coming from different backgrounds and um, kind of doing all of that work together, which is essentially what I've been doing in my whole career so far. Um, but I have now been exposed to more people with more different backgrounds. And so I have a little bit of a better idea and able an ability to answer these types of questions. So um, I pulled out a few different questions to help kind of structure this and make sure that I'm answering what people's uh, questions are and their concerns. So. The first one is, uh, I'm a computer science major. Is it possible for me to get into bioinformatics since I don't really have a biology background? So for this one, I would say that yes, it's absolutely possible for you. Just like it was possible for me coming from just biology, not knowing the CS, um, you can also come from computer science and software and get into bioinformatics. Um, if you are trying to get into a master's or PhD in bioinformatics, you 
may want to, while you're still in school, take some of the classes in biology that you have available to you, if you have extra time. Just like I had extra time to stuff a few CS and software, uh, or CS and math classes, statistics and so on, into my schedule at the end of college. So if you have that ability, by all means, take as much biology as you can. Um, the top priority classes that I would go for there are genetics if you can get it and any prerequisites you have to take to get to genetics at my school we had to take two classes before that so i don't know if you can get all the way there but uh, hopefully that is available to you and if you can take any kinds of classes in bioinformatics or something that mentioned genome or genomics that would be a huge plus as well since a lot of bioinformatics these days is very related to next generation sequencing and genomics types of efforts and these also have a lot of impact downstream in the clinic and so on so in terms of um, creating great scientific impact knowing about genomics i think would be a top priority unless you have a specific interest um, in some other field um, but that's also my own bias again grain of salt so if there are classes that you are interested in like if you're super interested in evolution or ecology or environmental science or cancer biology or any of these other things, by all means, take those classes. Um, I highlight specifically genetics because I think that it is a more conceptual class. You will not be memorizing very much, but you will learn a lot that apply to all the other areas of biology as well, since DNA is so fundamental to most things that we do in, in biology. Um, so that's what I would prioritize. Be sure that if you are applying to master's and PhD programs that you check the specific requirements for those programs because they're all going to be a little bit different. Some of them may actually require that you have a biology major and some of them will not. Um, I hope that most of them would not, but this can be completely different in different countries. The US is a little bit more flexible where different programs are different. And so you can usually like find some school that will let you do something your way um, and still get into their program. And in other places, it's just impossible. So um, definitely check the programs that you're interested in joining to see what the requirements are. Okay, so another question that's kind of related to this is, I'm really interested in both bio and CS. If I major in bio and master's in bioinformatics, can I still get back into CS later? So this is kind of capturing that, oh, I want to do both, but how do I do both and how do I fit it in and so on. Um, I would suggest that you try to do as much of both as you can. Um, if it's possible for you to double major in biology and computer science and, and you can handle that, go for it. I think that would be a really amazing combination. It's probably what I would have done if I could go back to the beginning of college right now and start over uh, because I really enjoyed my CS classes. So I would have totally stuffed more of those into my schedule if I had figured out that I wanted to do that three years earlier than I did. Um, towards the beginning of college. So try to do both. If that's not available to you, again, because I know a lot of countries are a little bit stricter in their um, education ladders where you can't just like, oh, I want to double major in art, history, and math or whatever. Um, we can do that at some American colleges. I don't assume that you can do that everywhere. So combine your interests as much as you can. But if you can't, then at least try to take classes in both at the beginning so that you know which one you would prefer to take more classes in later. I think you can always get the kind of career that you want in the future as long as you're not shutting yourself off and limiting yourself too early. Um, especially in science. If you can just pick up as much science as you can, it's never going to be harmful. Um, I think that's never a bad idea. So that's what I would say about combining things, you know, just double major with everything. Don't try to do biology, then bioinformatics, and then like 
non-biology software engineering later just try to like stuff everything in at the beginning so you can see what your possibilities are and then you know figure it out as you go careers are always going to be in multiple stages but if you plan three stages ahead then you're making plans for a future you that is probably going to think very differently about what he or she wants so you might want to try to explore your interests now and don't put off any interests like put them on a shelf or something for later don't do that just explore everything now and then that way when you have new interests later there'll actually be room for them and you won't have this large pile kind of like the kanban board you're not going to have a huge backlog of like oh i should have explored this i should explore this i should explore this because you get new interests in the future too so try to do everything now and if it's stressful, that's good because turns out stress is actually good for you. I was just reading a book about that that I'll link in the description or I'll just tell you the title. It's called The Upside of Stress. Um, and I kind of recommend that. It makes me think like, oh, it's good to do more things even if it's stressing me out a little bit. That's not necessarily a bad thing. So it's good to challenge ourselves. That is my conclusion from that book. So. Another question is, how would a CS slash software person move into this field? Can I be part of a team without formal bio knowledge? So I take this as someone who's already finished college and is probably already working as a software engineer in industry, for instance, and they're now thinking like, oh, this looks cool, but did I kind of miss the boat? And how do I get into bioinformatics from where I am? say without going back to school um, for someone in that position I would say that yes you can probably be part of a lot of teams that do some form of bioinformatics or related work that you can join without having formal biology knowledge so short answer yes long answer is I think you have a range of different options, some of which will be more or less available to you um, depending on where you are and what kind of jobs are available. It's hard for me to predict that. You may be in a totally different part of the world than I am. I'm in the Bay Area, so um, here we have biotech companies and we have tech companies and some of them kind of do both and it's great. Um, but for you, everything could be a little bit different. So again, take everything I say with a grain of salt. What I would say is you have this range and on the one hand, you can work at a biotech company, but work on a software team where everyone else is a software engineer and you don't really talk to the biologists very much or the bioinformaticians. Maybe the whole company is uh, barely has any scientists in it, um, or it could be a biotech company, but all the bio people are on a different team or something. and you get to do software and you it does intersect with the biology a little but you don't actually have to work with any biologists in order to do your work so this can be beneficial still because if one of the reasons that you're trying to do more of this type of work um, is that you want the meaning uh, the impact of working towards something that is useful to scientists or to health professionals uh, right now with COVID-19, of course, this is something that we think about a lot. And so if some of you out there are thinking like, oh, how can I do more in my career to help? One of the things that you could do is get involved in, in like kind of plug your work into something that supports healthcare or science, um, and especially like life sciences and biomedical sciences in some kind of way. So. That's one reason why you might want to join a team like that. So you can kind of have the impact of being like, oh, I was part of um, building new pharmaceuticals, even if indirectly. Uh, but you can still be doing software. So it's maybe a lot more comfortable for you to continue working on software. And that's an option. Another option totally on the other end of the spectrum is kind of like the software engineers that I'm working with in my daily work right now, where we're on a software uh, or sorry, we're on a research team Everyone is kind of running machine learning type experiments on the genomic software and it's a really amazing environment because the software engineers are working with us who have genomics experience a lot and if you're in that kind of role you can learn a lot and 
you can still use your software skills to help move the research along and you can do a lot of really cool things. This is a lot more challenging because you might want to start taking a biology course so that you feel like you understand the foundations of what you're doing better, but you can also be collaborating with bioinformaticians and just be learning on the go. The thing is that this is probably going to be more intellectually challenging and possibly more intellectually interesting to you if that's something that you like compared to just being on a software team that works in a biotech company, but you don't really see the biology that much. And in between that, you know, you could be working to help bioinformaticians that are internal to the company that you're at, but you're on a software team. So there might be some people who have kind of mixed bio and software knowledge, and you might be working closely with product managers who do have a bio background. And so you can kind of like do the in-between type of Thing. I hope that makes sense, uh, where there's something in between in that range. So you have that nice spectrum of opportunities that you might be able to get. And this is all the things that you can do without going back to school. Um, if you are still in a point in your career where you feel like going back to school seems like a fun idea, then by all means, check out like doing a PhD in bioinformatics if you want to do like a full on research career. That's a possibility. Um, but like I said on this side, like you don't actually have to do that. It is possible for you to work in a research team with bioinformaticians and be doing that kind of research without having a whole PhD in it or anything. So you might still be able to do that kind of research um, without stacking up an extra like five years in school because PhDs can take a while. They usually take at least four years. If you want to be guaranteed to find something that's more researchy, then I think usually academic positions get closer to that because you might be hired directly into an academic lab that has a professor who does bioinformatics and you're, they sometimes hire software engineers to help them manage some of the software that they have created already or to build new software that helps scientists and they publish in scientific papers, but their graduate students need to be doing new experiments all the time, so they can't be building software, but you'll have to work really closely with those bioinformaticians in that academic lab in order to make it work. Um, the downside to this, of course, is that academic positions rarely pay as much as you would get in industry. Um, and that brings me to another quote that I just really thought is um, fun to read. I think it captures a nice sentiment, so I just want to read this. So here's the quote. Sounds like a cool field. I just wish pay in this field was as good as mainstream tech companies. This fusion of bio and CS is so much more interesting and fulfilling than other crap. I, I quite like this. I would challenge you by saying that any field or almost any field um, can be meaningful and fulfilling and interesting. So there are definitely people who have very fulfilling careers working in just software. I think there's a lot of really interesting things that you could be doing. Um, and we don't want to say that other people's careers are not interesting or fulfilling. They're just not interesting or fulfilling to us. But that said, I can tell you that I agree somewhat that the kind of work that I get to do right now is more interesting and fulfilling than most jobs I could imagine um, for me specifically. And this is because it has a, like this type of field that I'm in has a nice combination of the day-to-day -day building of software that is challenging, but not impossible. And I can come to work and I can do something tangible and productive every day that brings me closer to like building some larger thing. So that's kind of the day-to-day -day work that I do enjoy. Another thing is that it's intellectually interesting to me, and that is really good because there, you know, I like having a job where when I shower in the morning, if I think about my work, um, I sometimes come up with ideas and I'm like, ooh, I should try it this way. 
instead. And so that's kind of the mark of something that's intellectually interesting to me, something that I think about that my brain kind of keeps thinking about in its downtime when I'm not at work and I get ideas and I can't wait to go to work and implement those ideas. Um, so that's, I think, one aspect of what could be intellectually interesting. The third thing that I like about it is that I can draw some kind of a line from the work I'm doing to more impact, uh, some kind of positive impact in the world, such as on healthcare. And so that's part of the reason why I do it. Um, yes, it is, to me, more interesting and fulfilling than other crap. <laughs> um, addressing the part about wishing pay in this field was as good as mainstream tech companies. I think it can be. So when you talk about mainstream tech companies, there are obviously some companies in the Bay Area, especially that pay employees um, above what the market suggests in smaller companies. So if you're working at a hundred person startup, you're not going to make the same amount of money as if you work for Facebook, say. And so now if we're comparing a hundred person startup in the biotech industry versus regular tech industry, then I think some of that difference definitely goes away. I'm not sure if it levels out completely, um, but I also have not looked this up specifically. I just know that I know people in biotech as well as regular tech, and they don't have a huge disparity in how much money they make. Of course, if you're in academia, then the money might be less and and that's okay. You know, there's usually kind of a trade-off. I wish that we funded science more so that we could afford to pay all the people who are doing science in academia better. Um, both grad students, postdocs, the professors, and all of the people like software engineers who work in academic labs and do all of this great work maintaining bioinformatics software, which is so important because so many scientists use it. I do wish we paid all those people better. But you shouldn't choose any career just because of the money. Money is a tool to help you in your happiness optimization search. And it is up to each of us to explore the solution space of what happiness means to us and try to like go down one route and say, okay, does that make me happier? And you can kind of imagine how much money actually matters to you in your career. Um, but studies show that above a certain level, there's a smaller marginal return of having additional money. In any case, money is not everything, but it is an important piece. Um, I'm definitely happier now than I, when I was making like 30,000 a year as a graduate student. Uh, but it's just part of the equation of what makes a happy life. So I do recommend that you try to find some kind of a job where you feel like you have that triangle, the overlap of uh, impactful, intellectually interesting, and day-to-day -day work that you enjoy doing and stuff that makes you enjoy getting up in the morning. If you don't enjoy getting up in the morning, then life is too short to stay in that career just because it makes you a lot of money. But you can probably make some tweaks that make you happy without making you broke. So I don't agree that there's always going to be this trade-off between making enough money to keep your family happy and having a good, fulfilling, everyday work. Um, I don't think that that is a simple trade-off. There's going to be a little bit of a trade-off sometimes, but the world has a lot of interesting things available to us and we just need to explore it a little bit and find something that has the right combination of things that make each of us happy. So. One thing that's kind of an undercurrent of some of these questions is like one person actually asked, is it okay for me to do, I think it was a master's in bioinformatics if I don't have any biology experience. I was like, yeah, everything is okay. You just, you know, might be less prepared. But yeah, the undercurrent of some of these questions is like, is it too late? 
for me to have a more interesting career? Am I good enough? Yes, you're definitely good enough. I'll repeat something that my calculus teacher in high school had put up on her wall and she kept pointing to it when people were like, oh, but it's really hard and like, I don't understand it. And, and she would just point to that sign that said, you can do hard things. So that's something that I want to share with you. I might do a whole video on this later because it's so important. There are things that are going to be hard. Genetics is hard. A lot of biology is actually hard, but you already know CS, right? That's hard. You learned that. So, and even if you didn't, even if you're just starting out and you don't know any of these things, you can do hard things. We all can. We can learn things that are difficult to learn. We can accomplish things that are difficult to accomplish. You can do hard things. So that's what I want to end with today. And yeah, I just wish you all the best. And I hope that you have a interesting, fulfilling and impactful career, regardless of whether that becomes bioinformatics or whether you find some other great way to have impact in your career, even if you stay in doing CS and software and you never touch biology. That's all fine, but I wish you all the best nonetheless. So thank you and Maria signing off. Bye.